Brace yourself. Adapting a famed property into the world of games is a practice that's become pretty condemning throughout the years, and it's easy to see why. In a world where games are used more as product placement than preserving artistic visions in the name of the original creator, many adaptations have lacked the respect to make something with attentiveness and passion. It's no surprise that the discussion regarding video game adaptation has persevered for as long as there are stories to license and money to change hands. Regardless of artistic integrity or the conglomerates that can affect it, licensed games are no new thing. They've definitely made strides since the days of the original NES, which became one of the most notorious trash dumps for poor quality licensed games in all of the medium's history. I can't say much more about NES licensed games than what has already been said. But I like to think licensed properties are beginning to get better in the realm of video games. Quality control has begun to influence bits and pieces of the industry. Artists are starting to become more involved with the adaptations of properties they create or curate. Compared to the 80s and 90s, the new millennium has created more discipline. While there's still a lot of room for improvement, video game adaptations are beginning to rise above their checkered past and stand as experiences that don't just honor and respect the source material, but craft entirely new journeys that can stand on their own as quality games, ones that can be enjoyed even by those unfamiliar with the original story. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, The Game is no stranger to this topic, and is often one of the big names that's brought up when good licensed games are discussed. On the scale of quality, it generally has high marks, and there's a considerable amount of fan support behind it. Brian Lee O'Malley's story of a flawed 20-something desperately trying to make sense of his relationship with his mysterious love interest, peppered with retro game references and anime fight scenes, has become a bit of a cult classic and its notable aesthetics seem almost tailor-made for a game adaptation. The game may be a rare success for licensed titles, but I'm hoping this video can express my thoughts on what makes this game an artifact worth exploring. This is Remembering Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, The Game. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game is a real anomaly in video game discussion. Sure, it had quite the reception when first released, alongside the Edgar Wright-directed film adaptation of the original comic series, but most of its relevance in a modern-day context is not really related to the game itself. No, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game found most of its presence, ironically, from a lack of presence. Supposedly due to expiring licenses, the game was delisted from digital storefronts, and as a game with so many media outlets involved in its development, it was constantly at the mercy of someone pulling the plug. Since the game's delisting, it's become one of the poster children of the ongoing debate over video game preservation. Alongside games like P.T. and Project Spark, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game's disappearance showed the obvious downsides of the push toward an all-digital future. Despite being released during the boom of digital download titles, in retrospect, it probably released at one of the worst possible times. It was a period when physical media was often taken for granted in favor of a convenient delivery method and lower prices than a big $60 game. But nowadays, the downsides of digital are all the more apparent. We've seen what happens when a video game disappears from digital storefronts, and the negatives are beginning to take over the conversation. Today, we have physical media production outlets like Limited Run Games, who champion physical media and sell it to gamers who know that digital releases are often on borrowed time. If it was released today, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game might have stuck around, but unfortunately, most of us didn't know what we had till it's gone. On paper, Scott Pilgrim transitioning to a four-player beat-em-up makes sense. Its anime battle scenes and retro game aesthetic make no effort to hide this. But considering the actual story of Scott Pilgrim, simply going straight for this genre seems a bit questionable when you think about it. In the game, much of Scott and Crew's journey was just beating the shit out of thugs without too much in terms of character development or storytelling. In contrast, the comic series' best moments stem from character arcs and interpersonal drama. These were all characters with baggage that definitely needed to be unpacked. It made for a compelling narrative, and seeing how each major arc resolved was something that kept many readers invested. 
The game doesn't make much effort to translate these moments. Major dialogue is replaced with emoticons or brief in-engine cinematics. Several key scenes, highlights of the comics, are replaced by pretty simplistic transition scenes between levels. Also, the essential bits featuring Scott's friends Stephen and Kim are much more subdued than they are in the comics or even the film. I can't help but feel like both characters were meant to simply fill the third and fourth player spots instead of contributing anything to how the actual narrative was meant to play out. Interestingly enough, Scott Pilgrim was originally going to be adapted by the now defunct Telltale Games, but O'Malley turned them down. I think it could have worked, honestly. A narrative-focused adventure game drenched in that purely Scott Pilgrim style. But regardless of what could have been, the beat-em-up direction highlights Scott Pilgrim's action-driven side. There really isn't much room made for anything else. As corporately long as its title is, if there's one bit that really makes the most sense in practice, it's Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, The Game. I mean, yeah, this is a game, obviously, but for lack of a better term, it's a very gamey game. Almost all of its effort is driven to keep its more synthetic, design-driven aspects on full display. Simple but frantic combat, striking and charming visual style, and energetic chiptune soundtrack, these all complement the tactile elements of Scott Pilgrim, instead of much of the series' stellar thematic placement. In a way, that's a bit of a missed opportunity, because Scott Pilgrim's deeper narrative workings really don't deserve to be overlooked. But Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the Game really doesn't need that narrative development to strive. It stands as a companion piece, one that embraces the series' aesthetic in a way that's downright admirable in its fanboyish nature. The way Scott Pilgrim's world is presented, so chock full of references and in-jokes, shows a level of artistic dedication that I simply can't help but praise. Visiting locales like the shops Scott frequents or the shows he attends demonstrates discipline that's often missing from other licensed games. The fan service just never ends. This is a title that actively identifies its audience and plays to that audience's preferences at nearly every opportunity. In a way, it's genius product placement that constantly has its target market in its crosshairs, but beyond the corporate ties, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game still manages to feel like a pet project, one that's built for a select niche first and foremost. No better example of this focus is this game's presentation. This game is gorgeous. Some of the most creative art direction I've seen in a beat-em-up, rich with expressive character models and excellent environmental palettes. In fully embracing the retro beat-em-up aesthetic, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game manages to look like a throwback, but one of the most refined and respectable throwbacks I've seen on any digital storefront. The character models have functional similarities, especially when it comes to proportions and hitboxes, but the visual distinctions of the character designs are tight and deliberate. They echo each character's comic design to a T, a careful attention to detail that demonstrates the artist's forethought so well. But that retro reverence is not limited to the game's aesthetic. It's what powers the gameplay, too. It's a retro beat-em-up akin to classics like River City Ransom. You have your basic combos, throws, weapons, special moves, it's all accounted for. Thugs come on screen, you beat them down, then move further onto the next screen. You get occasional minigames and some detours to shops or secret areas, and you can even level up your skills and stats with these extra detours. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game is about as true to the past as you can possibly get with a retro-inspired beat-em-up, and its focus is clearly honed on channeling that now legendary design. And while that might work with the presentation, I think therein lies an issue when it comes to the gameplay. For all its winks and nudges toward its influences, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game is a beat-em-up that lacks gameplay ambition. From a design standpoint, it doesn't do anything particularly inventive, innovative, or revolutionary. Nearly everything you see in its gameplay has been done before, in one way or another, and no amount of stylish pixel art or Anamanaguchi blips and bloops can hide this. Enemies have templates that appear repeatedly throughout the game. Most weapons are very similar to one another in how they're used. Really, it's a processed beat-em-up that rarely ever gives the player something fresh or unexpected, constantly picking from the most standard and predictable gameplay directions to give itself structure. The few moments of deviation become all the more valuable as you progress in the game. Racing through a building to avoid being attacked by a rampant vegan, or attacking flying piggy banks to scoop up big cash in subspace feel like fresh diversions, but these moments are few and far between. Most of the game is beating up thugs, whether they're bouncers, ninjas, or whatever reskin you prefer. 
The combat does remedy this with unlockable moves and a combo juggling system that has a cartoony bounce to it, but Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game has no real mechanical evolution. This is a game that wants to be just like the games that influenced it, answering each question on the test, but showing their work in the most succinct and by-the-book way possible. But that creates a conundrum for me. For all that I've said, for all of the missteps the game makes, this is still a satisfying beat-em-up that I absolutely recommend. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game fanboyishly goes right to the beat-em-up book, picking and choosing the most standard of practices, but these practices still hold up very, very well. Boss fights are remarkably dynamic and variant in how they progress. Leveling up skills is satisfying, and as many beat-em-ups have done in the past, it shines in multiplayer. Punching an enemy to a teammate who can smack them back with a combo of their own demonstrates a loose synergy that, despite the lack of gameplay evolution, makes combat feel surprisingly technical. Air juggling is a valid tactic, and it's not easy to pull off perfectly, demanding proficiency in your move's timing and knowing your hitboxes. The ability to throw your own teammates is riotous, instigating a totally wacky aesthetic that fits in Scott Pilgrim's tone. Everything is done in an acceptable, even disciplined way and that makes for a fun and wild ride of a beat-em-up. And I understand the criticism here, the lingering phrase, that Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game's mechanics are dated. Well, I gotta argue against that. Yes, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game draws on retro sensibilities at every opportunity for its gameplay, but what it lacks in fluidity and evolution, it makes up for in staying true to its influence's roots. The punchy impact of combat, the sensibility of easy-to-spot hitboxes, the boss design that's rich with interesting phase and aesthetic design, it all shows a straight-ahead dedication to old-school beat-em-ups. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game holds up because beat-em-ups core design is preserved, a gameplay philosophy that doesn't tighten the bolts entirely, but still delivers a satisfying action experience that's so fun to revisit. It's not hard to find games that do evolve beat-em-up gameplay. The Dishwasher made combat faster and flashier, Castle Crashers' variety was more extensive and dynamic, Double Dragon Neon used referential humor for more interesting enemy encounters. I can see why, compared to these examples, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game might appear inferior, but there's something to be said for a game that performs the fundamentals of the genre so right. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game might have answered each test question in the most standard and straight-faced way possible, making very little effort to go above and beyond but it still got the answers right, and that did demand a considerable amount of studying and insight to do. Based on that, giving it a low grade simply doesn't make sense to me. For all its missteps, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World the game is a good beat-em-up, one whose time was cut far too short. Its presentation is stellar, its fan service constant, and its gameplay, while lacking in interesting progression, is tactile and enjoyable. I do wish the game took more advantage of the comic series' interesting narrative, and there's a lingering lack of originality in the enemy and challenge design. But on the whole, its disappearance is all the more maligned. The fan support for this game is totally justified, and I believe that fan support will persist. As the discussion over game preservation continues, the appreciation for the game's best attributes will grow, and perhaps we'll be able to see some kind of relisting in the future. Licensed games have started to conquer their past with experiences that have adapted their source material in interesting and fun ways, and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game, shortcomings aside, is a success that shouldn't be forgotten. <laughs>